All right, in this video, we're going to be tying up the shad buster. This is uh, a shad fly pattern that I found in an article that Steve Gardner wrote some time ago. <clears throat> um, it is a hackle type fly, but slightly different than uh, a comet or uh, any of the soft hackle types in, in that it uses a, a spade hackle feather. And uh, just slightly different in how it's tied. An interesting looking fly. I've seen pictures of it before, but um, never really knew what the name of the fly was and happened to cross uh, an old article and um, found the pattern. So I'm going to tie it up for you today. In the vise I have uh, Mustad 3366A in a size 6 and I'll be tying this fly with pink uni thread and a 6 op. I'm going to start uh, about a hook eye behind the eye and this is a large eye hook so if you're doing this with the standard uh, eye size hook, you might want to start two eyes back. We're going to need some room to tie in a uh, hackle in front of the eyes, which is what I found interesting about this fly. And snip away our excess. And then I'll just bring my thread back up to the tie in point. For the tail, I'm going to use some marabou. And if you watch my videos, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that's uh, kind of rare. I, I tend to substitute <laughs> kip tail um, when when a pattern calls for marabou, but I decided to uh, to tie the pattern as originally uh, listed. So I've got a section of, of marabou here, and I'm going to tie in a tail about the length of the uh, shank of the hook. and then capture our marabou. I'm just going to lift that tail up slightly. And I'll snip away the excess there. For the body I'm going to be using some pink uh, cactus chenille here. Uh, this is micro. Uh, you can also use pink body braid. And I'm just going to advance my thread back up to the tie-in point. And go ahead and wrap my body. And I'll capture the chenille. And then snip away the excess. For the eyes, I'm going to be using some silver bee chain. And I'm going to tie that in, um, you know, probably an eye's length behind the eye. Make sure I have enough room to tie in a hackle. This pattern calls for the hackle to be tied in uh, in front of the eyes. Flip it over and build some shoulders here. All right, uh, for the collar or hackle. Uh, I'm not going to be using a soft hackle here like you would in uh, other hackle type shad flies. I'm actually going to be using uh, a spade feather. So this is off of a, a dry fly cape, but it's the larger feathers that you'll find kind of up top and behind. 
Um, you want something that's long but stiff. So I'm just going to select a feather. That looks pretty good. So something about like that. You can see there's some webby um, webbiness down at the the base of the barbs, but it's not really a webby feather. It's a very um, stiff feather. These are the feathers you would typically use for um, tails on a dry fly. Uh, we want long barbs, so barbs that will end up coming back uh, to the bend of the hook or, or butt of the fly. Um, so I'm just going to measure and I'll go ahead and prepare my hackle sort of like I would a soft hackle. Alright, so I have my hackle prepared. Um, I just have a section stripped away here. I'm going to go ahead and tie it in by the tip though. And so right if it rolls on, you can make a couple loose wraps and then pull that tip up. And then cinch it down. And then I like to just fold that tip up and make a couple of wraps uh, on top of it. So make sure it's good and locked down there. And then snip away the excess tip. And what we want to do here is just go ahead and stroke our fibers back. Listen your fingers first and stroke our fibers back or barbs back. And you can tell this feather just does not um, react like a soft hackle does. Very stiff. But we're still trying to kind of stroke them back. Try to get everything to point backwards towards the butt of the fly as best you can. And then I'm going to try to take three wraps. There's one. And again, all the while, since these are stiff, just continue stroking the barbs back to encourage them to lay down. There's two. And there's three. And it's alright if you've got some barbs pointing forward. Let's go ahead and capture your hackle. And then we just want to snip away the excess. Now what I'm going to do is just take those barbs and stroke them back. Try to get them all captured there and you're going to take some turns kind of over the top of them. And you can see that kind of gets it to lay down uh, between the gaps in the eyes. So you end up kind of with a more triangular shape or profile rather than that kind of 3D or rounded shape that a, that a comet has. Almost like it's got a beard and a mohawk. And I'll just go ahead and whip finish. And snip away the excess. And that is the Shad Buster.